<laughs> thrill seekers to episode four of classic cars and coffee what i call celebrity squares it's been a big month for car fanatics and uh, amongst us we have uh, um, four guests as normal and one guy's missing i want to say a big hi to ross mace who apparently is uh, counting his knicker collection after his last concert and um, <laughs> apparently there's been a shower of knickers thrown in his direction so he says but yeah can what you size are they? that's the main thing can we just hand us yeah. the uh, size um, <laughs> i think Nickers, um, some of them Nickers are spinning indicates a, yeah knickers indicates a certain demographic so i'm not yeah, sure yeah spin it are they knickers or they're spinnakers <laughs> i don't know anyway um welcome it's um it's been a fascinating car month for me and and motorbike month i'll run through some of the things which i'm going to cover with you um i wanted to i okay so here's something that's coming up in the future we're going to try and have an what I call an industry industry expert come in and talk to us about the state of the market. These are people who trade um, in classic cars and uh, have a greater insight than the likes of us mere amateurs. You're on the borderline, I know, Jeff, but I, I don't want to also uh, press you where you might not want to be pressed. Um, during the month, I went and saw a film at um, the Luna in Leaderville, which was uh, the world premiere, no less, of Red Dust Races, and it's the story of Lake Perkalili out in Kalgoorlie, 35 kilometres southeast, I think it is, of Kalgoorlie, a massive flat lake, which is a dry bed most of the year. In fact, most of the century, it's a dry bed. And um, in, back in, I think, the turn of the century, 1912, that sort of time, uh, people were racing Model T Fords and Plymouths and Pontiacs and Buicks and all the early stuff that we had in the state on this flatbed race, uh, this uh, lake. Anyway, it went up until uh, probably just after the Second World War, and then it all packed up. And anyway, so a group of guys, I think in the last five years, have got the whole thing back together. It's bigger than Ben Hur. It's been acknowledged by Octane magazine, was in the finalists for uh, World's Most Significant Car Event. That means puts it wow. in the same sort of light as Goodwood and Monterey, um, Lake Geneva, la la la, all these amazing car events, and it's right up there in it. Anyway, I booked my accommodation in uh, Kalgoorlie this year because it's only a, it's a 35 kilometer drive from, from Cal, or in my case, a motorbike ride from Cal, out there to the track. It runs for five days, and I think it's uh, the first week in September. But here's the tip. Go to the Google Google Red Dust Races, and all the details will be there, or Google Lake Perkalili. Um, I did my first oil change and coolant change with my son this month on his um, hmm. old Volvo. And it was a spiritual experience. He, he only managed to, managed to over-tighten one of the nuts, and, um, but fortunately to no great um, detriment. And we managed to make, uh, affect an oil filter change, an oil change and a coolant change. And um, his Volvo goes all the more better for it now. Um, classic Cars and Coffee, coffee was fantastic last month. Mm -hmm. um, I always have some favorite cars, and they're kind of the underdogs. I'm the... I'm kind of like your underdog man. And there was a um, BMW E28 there that I just lusted mm. after. There was um, some early Mercedes that were sort of stock, but not stock. Um, there was a, um, I think, a, what they call the Plymouth Prowler, you know, that uh, V6 mm -hmm. Roadster thing. There's a yellow one. I just, Automatic. oh my God. I, <laughs> Automatic. I, I want V6. one. I want one. <laughs> Uh, it's such an insane car that fits in right with my philosophy of insane cars. Um, yeah, there's a whole bunch of interesting stuff, but I'm keen to hear from you guys what you've been up to this month. I've got a list here of stuff, but I don't want to dominate. Um, over to you, Derek Graham. Oh, sure. Hey, can I just firstly acknowledge that that was a fantastic movie because you generously put me as a plus oh. one, um, uh, <laughs> only because your wife wasn't available that <laughs> night. She was probably doing a hair. And so, That's right. mm -hmm. so You're sorting out a sock drawer, actually, Derek. Oh, well, there you go. It's urgent those sock drawers. Oh, um, yeah. But it was packed out. The entire theatre was sold out, which was um, quite a big turnout. Um, a lot yep. of enthusiasts. You look around the crowd, and they were probably noticeably not young, um, but they were <laughs> re they were very regular um, visitors to Classic Cars and Coffee. So that was nice to see. And and that date, by the way, is from the 29th of September to the 5th of October in 2025 that they're doing the event. Um, and it is exciting to see that sort of thing get recreated here in, in Western Australia. Uh, and now, as you say, be acknowledged as one of the really special events of the world. So I think we'll see a lot more happening with it. We're going to reach out, we, 
Festival of Speed, the creation of the joint venture, joint activity between um, West Australian Sporting Car Club and Classic Cars and Coffee. Uh, we will out reach out to them and ask them if they might do a regularity run um, around the track. <laughs> Even if it's for a time of three minutes, it doesn't matter. Just to see some great old cars go out on the, the Carco track up there and display for everyone. A little revival-like from um, yeah. what is the UK revival. So it'll be, it'll be lovely to see it. So, oh. yeah, it was really... I was swept up in oh. all of that. It was so exciting to see all those great cars yeah, and people in, 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 enthusiastic. Yeah. Um, I'd love to see some of those cars come along to Classic Cars and Coffee. Mm. Yeah, it's a funny thing. People will often think, I'd, I'd love to see some old vintage cars. We have tried so hard. We have approached the, 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 the um, Veteran Car Club. We've asked them to come along. We've begged them to come along. And they're very, very big numbers, a member of that club. I mean, it's like thousands of, of members. Yeah. But every single time they turn up, they seem to turn up with like 12 members or 15 members at their actual the events that I've seen. They're not that big. Um, but this is a great avenue for those guys to turn up. What I think is really important is that if you see a 1930s car, a 1940s car that the guys have bought along, their pride and joy, they've created, they've restored it, the next generation has to see it and bond to it or it will just disappear and no one yeah, will be interested. There's no new owners of these cars. Which they is have the great, to get out. Yeah, yeah. the great tra tragedies. Um, That's right. Jeff, you're overseas. I am. Uh, I... Uh, I went to the uh, opening round of the MotoGP season in Qatar, uh, ostensibly oh. because I wanted to see uh, the first Marc Marquez race on a Ducati. Uh, he did not disappoint, but I think I was most uh, taken by Pedro Acosta, who is a 19-year-old rookie. In his first race, he almost ended up on the podium, so he is a generational talent. Uh, and then... In terms of car things, I've spent the last two weeks building BMWs around Europe. Uh, yeah, I've seen BMWs, the photos. BMWs are not my uh, general choice of conveyance. However, uh, I had a 128 Ti in Spain, which is a uh, front-wheel drive sort of Golf GTI competitor, and uh, that hit the limiter quite easily at 254. Uh, and then uh, for the last couple of days in Hamburg, I had an M2, a brand new M2, uh, and that also hit the limiter quite handily. Uh, 254 again. So uh, to all my mates who've hit 260 uh, on the autobahn, there must have been a serious downhill because I tried and just 254 was it. Jeez. Yeah. What's the noise level like at that level? Well, the funniest thing, so I picked the M2 up and I'm belting down the autobahn and I'm like, oh, geez, it's wandering a bit. And I was doing 230. So it's like, okay, yeah, fair <laughs> enough. It's, there's a little bit of movement going on. But yeah, I've just, I've had such a ball uh, in oh. Europe. Uh, yeah, because the Spanish don't care and the Germans let you do it. So perfect. Happy days. Now, Rex, yeah, down to you. Yeah. Um, how's the, I wanted to quiz you on what, what the markets are doing, how things are going uh, in terms of sales. I know we released the Himalayan uh, Royal Enfield um, last month at Classic Cars and Coffee, which is fantastic, and it yeah. looks like an awesome bike. I hear yeah. you're selling a few. Yeah, heaps. We, uh, we got that bike uh, less than 24 hours before it appeared at coffee, uh, Cars and Coffee. So, oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it was awesome to be able to show it off. Um, yeah, we've sold heaps, and I think the we, for the first time we've got the uh, a container landing into Frio rather than into Melbourne, so that should oh, happen nice. on uh, April the third, and delivery start April the eighth, and I, I, I'm tipping it'll be bike of the year. So let's, wow, let's see okay. in twelve months' time. It'll it's okay. it's it, it's a massive leap ahead of the current model. Now, not only it's, do you do the Himalayan tours, mm. you also sell bikes on the floor. Yep. which is new and used bikes. Yep. Tell me, what's that market like? It's, it's, it's down, down a lot. So I, I did some quick research in the last couple of days. And since 2021, which was an anomaly, but we all remember what was happening in 2021, yeah. 
everybody, you know, we were all scared in the industry because we thought no one's going to be out here buying, but everybody had nothing else to do. They couldn't go overseas, so they were <laughs> they were buying buying toys. So if you look mm. at, um, I've got some, some numbers here, on off-road bikes, it's down from 53,000 in 2021 to 40,000, so it's down mm. 20%. Yep. And ATVs is down from 28,000 to 14,000. So wow. 50% drop in ATVs. So Rex, Road what was it like in like 2019? What was it like in 2019, 2018? In other words, pre-COVID, what's kind of the normal number? The, the, the road, road bikes are sort of down 4 or 5%, uh, but <clears throat> the, the trend is slightly up, but no more than the population growth. Mm, so okay. when we were talking about this the other day, and Triumph have released a new model called a, uh, I don't know, it's a 400 Scrambler or something like that, and the market never really grows more than population. So that means they're stealing sales from another mm. model. We were trying yeah. to work out what model it's stealing sales from. <laughs> it, was, it was hard to work out. A Duke 390. Yeah, that, that, that's what we came to, Duke 390. Yeah. Um, actually, mm. Rex, can I um, can I ask you a question? I watched a really intriguing video on YouTube about the, and I want to call it the, like the Royal Enfield, maybe GT or Clubman Cup, where they race yeah. identical cafe yeah. racer spec. Yeah. Oh my God! Can you guys get them? Because I would be down there and just throwing right. money at you we're, if we're doing I could it. get one of those. Really? This is like so a, I can come it, and buy one. Has Simon set you up? No, we've sponsored the GT Cup in the historic racing class at Collie. So it's, uh, oh it's called, they've started a class for us, Heritage Unlimited, and I raced last month, and we're racing again in, again in two weeks. And in those, with those same spec yeah. bikes? Yeah, oh, and they won't look exactly a, the same, but yeah, it'll be production they class. They're gorgeous. Mm. Yeah. They are, wow. Yeah. Mm. So, you, and there's options where you can actually, uh, you can buy the bike and set it up, or you can just lease mm -hmm. the bike for the 12 months. Oh, what just, sort of money is mm. involved in that? That's attractive. Leasing uh, is for 12 months it includes everything. So the transport of the bike to the track, fuel, consumables, everything, apart from your entry fees, is five <coughs> grand a year. Okay. And if anybody's no, ever raced before, you'll know that's cheap. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's that's cheap. How many races is that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I th off the top of my head, I think it's seven or eight uh, Sees uh, five at Collie and two at one at Wanneroo. Ooh, that's very cheap. To be fair, you uh, you two will have to watch out for your hips because yeah. you're pretty old. You know, you need to <laughs> consider that. So, can, yeah. can you be kinder? <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, oh dear. Um, that is actually really appealing. Yeah. Um, that's magnificent. To to yeah. like, I mean, I've raced Formula Ford and Appendix J race cars. And um, you can spend a lot of money going, going st still, slowly, like yeah. going nowhere. Actually, most motor racing is uh, all about a, a long wait, yeah, and a short yeah. drive. Yeah, it yeah. is all about waiting. Yeah, I, and, I remember um, when I, so, I finished. I know. Yeah, I finished racing uh, cars in the, with the Porsche Club some time ago, and really, it's just gentleman racing, you know, and they're very generous about how you can get your best time. Normally it's like the best out of X number of runs, which means you can pull a rabbit out of the hat and be a legend, not do so well in the last three, which is really great. Um, and so I finished that and thought, right, I don't want to go doing this again and try and win this prize again. And I called a friend up and said, tell me about cup car racing. What's that like? And this was in 2010. And I said, you know, I'm kind of on the edge. Do you think I'd be able to do it? And he says, oh, yes, he says, you has got a voice, very Germanic. He goes, yes, he says, you could do that. And he says, I said, how, could you, how much does it cost? He says, well, do you want to be at the pointy end? And I went, this is <laughs> racing. I mean, why wouldn't you want to be at the pointy yeah. end? And he said, he said $10,000 a race. And I went, oh. right. And he goes, assuming nothing goes wrong. Oh, <laughs> oh gearbox rebuild, yep. Yeah, or drive, yeah. or the, the, the drive shafts for you to mm, pop often stack. on them and all sorts yeah. of things, or you could bop into something. But you've got to send the cars all around Australia and all that sort of thing, so there's your $10,000 yeah. a, a race. And I found that particularly uninspiring and went and did something else. That's, in fact, that's when I went and bought the car in Europe. I'm, uh, yep. I'm surprised you were put off so easily, Derek. Um, <laughs> you know, the, I've, been, I've, been, I've been a motorbike enthusiast 
since my neighbour gave me a motorcycle and that was left to me in a will and then I restored it and blah, 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 blah. And now I'm, let's say I'm hooked, Rex. Mm -hmm. There is no hope for me. I'm, no. I, I love bikes. I think about bikes. I read about bikes. Yeah. I talk to bike people and uh, I'm probably a bike nut. Anyway, I don't have my unlimited class license. So I rely on people like Derek over here to chaperone me when I go out riding on my ah. big bikes because yes. I like big bikes. And um, anyway, so I've, I've been having lessons and I went for my R-Class license only last week. Oh. And I was feeling, a, I just wasn't feeling good. I was a bit fluey and as it worked out, I ended up having flu symptoms the days that followed, but this was a lead up to it. Anyway, I failed. I didn't Ooh. get my R-Class oh. license on my what, first. What did you do? Or di well, I, what I did, did you two, do or okay. not do? Two sins. And, and they served me well in that I think failing is a good idea. You know, not mm -hmm. a good idea, but a good outcome for anybody. Um, what I did was I, I was just feeling, seriously, like fluey and lousy. Shouldn't have done it, really. But I pulled a bravado, give it a go. Um, I, and by the way, and, but I'm about to tell you a different, what this is leading to is a different story. And it's, it's the crowding in our state of all Ooh. the public services. Like, and this is where I'm going with the DOT. Anyway, so I failed. What I did was I left my indicator on twice. Mm. Got, there's no... That's no disguising that you do it or you don't do it mm. left my indicator on twice and the other thing i did um there are positions you can one can ride on in the road and i rode in the wrong position i was riding mm. in in a p2 position in a dual lane road where some cars were parked on the left and i should have been in a p3 or p4 i know this mm. and i made the mistake and i and i you know i put it down to feeling lousy and i'm much much sharper now <laughs> I'm, anyway, I booked in again for the 10th. You'll have a further update in the future. Um, but I'm also, I'm now riding to York Motorcycle Festival next weekend. But I'm going mm -hmm. on my, on my uh, 350 two-stroke, which is um, Ooh, Lamb's. Lamb's car. Yeah, I know. It'll be a bit of a ride. But you know those people behind me? I don't care whether they breathe or not ever again. And, <laughs> or and a little bit of, a little bit of or sure here. oiling is correct. Oh, it is correct, and uh, but there'll be a little bit of oil come out the back of it, and uh, those people will. I'm sharing it. That's all I'm doing, you know. So anyway, so I'm going. On, I'm going on a 352 stroke, um, an RD 350 LC, to tell you the truth, which should be a lot of fun, and it'll get a lot of attention in York over the weekend. So it'll be fun. Mm. Um, but the thing where I started was, I had never because I don't have a lot of interaction with public services. I went to the Department of Transport to. Um, uh, apply for certain things and also I, I imported mm. another motorcycle from the east and I needed to get it licensed so I went there I arrived there there was a sign out the front and people queuing and the mm. sign said we have an expectation of a two and a half hour plus wait so I mm. went to the guy on the counter and I said hang on it's now three o'clock you close at four he said you got no chance just mm. you go away and come back early tomorrow morning so it opens at eight I think it's eight fifteen I got there at 8.30, so I was 15 minutes late, oh, and, and they had the, I know, amateur, um, mm. it turned out that I wasn't half an hour late, I was like two and a half hours late, because in the wow. first 15 minutes it filled up, and the sign went up a two and a half hour wait, after 15 minutes, this just tells me something about um, the uh, population increase, the stretch on our public services, and, and the insanity, um, all of the uh, Department of Transport officers are like this. They're mm. completely crammed. There's so people hang everywhere, hanging from the rafters. So which which centre did you go to, Simon? West, West Perth. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, so West, West Perth is normally one of the better ones. Really? Uh, and it used, yeah, it used to be that... Uh, the one near uh, Cytec. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so... Um, like Cannington is just, it's like, uh, wow. Cannington, I say, is like the cantina in Moss Eisley in Star Wars. Yeah. Like, you know, you wander in and there's a band playing. Like, it's, it's like that. It's, there are things that you shouldn't see uh, in, in my notes, DOT. Jeff, yeah. In my notes, I've written here that people die in there and don't get discovered no, really for, don't. Day, for days, you know. <laughs> yeah, so look, I, I would say that you, you made the right decision by going to City West. However, like, don't go on a Monday, don't go on a Friday, don't go after a long weekend, don't go before a long weekend. Like, there are so many rules that you need to take into account, Simon. The hot oh. tip is to go Wednesday or Thursday. Okay. So... Ooh. 
like Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, and go in yeah. the afternoon. And sometimes you've got to go more than once. Like the, it yeah, is, that's the way it is. But, but it was uh, for me yeah. an il- illustration of just how under stress our public yeah. services are with the population oh, no, explosion. Huge. It is. And, it, and it's intriguing. Huge, yeah. I was and listening to the, um, the the ABC, who of course is has sort of or a very generous, well-rounded, slightly left, um, you know, commentator of what's happening. And they, you know, proudly announced that Western Australia has had its largest single inflow of immigration ever in history, and how wonderful that was. And and then, of course, we have to realise that the price of the housing is going roaring up, yet our actual population growth is in negative growth. So the only reason the price of housing can possibly go roaring up is because there's a lot of extra people coming in, and these people yeah. are, are not migrants that have no money. They, they, they can afford it. I've taken my parents to the emergency department twice last week to get them in, and they had a five-hour ramp up and then were turned away. And this is in an ambulance. Oof. And then two days later, I tried it again, a five-hour ramp up, and they were turned away. Uh, and yeah. so you know, when I went and got an appointment to go to a doctor who was a specialist, Four and a half months waiting list. So this is the realm of a booming state, but it, it's booming because we're yeah. importing an Things enormous are, number of people. Yeah, you Things know. are under stress, there's no yeah. doubt. They really are, every, every well, facet. Hopefully, of hopefully they're all bringing nice cars with them. That's all I can say. Well, Because, you know, the, the personal so. import rules are, you know, all, all motorbike tricks, you know. Maybe <laughs> in not, fact, they, Max they should be briefed some, in, like the, in the paperwork. The, the briefing in the paperwork should say, you can import one car per person. Make sure it's the best car you can possibly buy. <laughs> you know, yeah, put all of your you money in go. this car yeah. and bring it in. <laughs> when I was commentating for the Festival of Speed up at Wanneroo Park, um, I met that couple who imported the... Well, they came from South Africa and they brought with them the 9126, uh, 1969 oh. um, long nose. 911, and it, I just fell in love with it. It was beautiful. It's a slate grey colour, oh, immaculate. Yeah. And I go, well, that's a car to bring. Mm. That's a good idea. Right-hand drive yeah. and all the rest of it. Mm. Now, um, Rex, you start... I found out something. Ahem, interesting Rex Havard um, notes. Um, you started Cafe Races, the Facebook page. Yeah. Tell me about the reason and mm. what Cafe Races does. Because we're uh, talking about bikes. Yeah. I... Uh I, I, I think it was 2011, and I, I must have moved over to the WA that year or the year before, and I uh, was customising. I'd bought a Deus Ex Machina. I, I'm sure people are familiar with yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I've got the um, T-shirt. Yeah. Um, the funny story about that. But I was in. Um, I bought it from Sydney uh, at Cross, and I in Sydney there was a decent cafe scene, cafe racer scene, but in Perth. I couldn't see anything. There was there was nothing happening, yeah. so I contacted uh, Mark Harwa, who was in Sydney and who was running Sydney Cafe Races, and I said I'd like to maybe start a Perth, a Perth uh, version of it. And uh, I, I went over there for business, and we went for a ride, and he he agreed. By the time I'd flown back, he'd set up the group, and from <laughs> there, I I tried to keep to about three hundred people in the group, and it was great with three hundred people, but it was it was I was declining like 20 people a day and uh, accepting sort of one person uh, in the end I let it go and there's like 4,000 people or 4,500 people in the group now so and then from there a, a lot of good things have happened because it was from that group that the Himalayan trips have started it was from that group that Distinguished Gentlemen's Ride around the world started wow mm. yeah That's and what does it do what's its function uh, it, it's at the moment. It used to be like monthly rides and, and weekly rides. Now, I don't know the way Facebook works. It, it's a little bit harder to to make it happen. But we'll put up, we'll post rides, uh, and then we will always organise the distinguished gentleman's ride in in Perth. Um, but it's mostly just social media now. And and if, if people want to go for a ride, they can they can put it up there and get other people to come along. That's the frustrating thing. With Sorry, with, with Facebook. Um, and, and that is that, you know, you've all of a sudden had this booming success. You've got 4,500 people on it. That means that you can't talk to them all. When you had 400, exactly. you could talk to them all. Mm. And now you've got 4,500. Yeah. Facebook says, right, if you want to talk to all of your members, you must yeah. pay. So we've got, I think, 13,000 on Classic Cars oh. and Coffee and about yeah. 
30,000 visitors a month. Um, and so for lots of people you know, say to me, oh, I, I'm not getting this, or I can't see the post, or I'm not doing that, and I, but I've signed up. Because we have to pay to talk yeah. to all of those people each time. Mm -hmm. It's extraordinary. Yeah. yeah. So uh, one thing that uh, Rex neglects to mention that happens on Perth Cafe Races <laughs> is uh, cafe racer builds from around the world are placed yeah. up and yep. then critiqued <laughs> mercilessly. Uh, and I'm, I'm a member because I'm a big fan of the cafe racer. And uh, yeah, there's a few things that you don't want to post because mm -hmm. you will get shot down in flames, like a like a really bad hatchet job on a oh. like a seat frame, or I don't know, metal Dodgy flake. Hatchet. I mean, I I love metal flake, so you know, that's the best. Yeah, I'm all I'm all about it, but yeah. But the, the, what we do, we do it in a nice way. So we'll post up a really really bad bike, but we'll comment. <laughs> what on the grass? <laughs> on the grass or the the, the <laughs> fence behind them. Oh, oh, look at the fence! Yeah, look at the paving yeah. on that. It's terrible. Yeah, yeah, man, those succulents are doing really well. Or it's good <laughs> when you get a new, you get a new member and they post. They're really proud of their bike and they post it up. And then if some of the old guys get in, they <laughs> they quickly talk about everything but the bike. And this guy's going, "What the hell's going oh. on?" That's so, yeah. I feel almost sorry an Australian guys. Australian road <laughs> know, passage. It's, it's a, it really yeah, is. Sort of, yeah. It's a compliment. Yeah, it is. It, it is. is a compliment in its own sort of backhanded way. Yeah, it's yeah. yeah you're part very of Aussie. Tribe. Very Aussie. Yeah. Um, I just want to review some of the cars that I really liked at uh, Classic Cars and Coffee last uh, meeting. But before I do, I went to Two Wheels, One Love, the Rogue Motorcycles thing at City West. How good is it? Friggin' awesome. It's off the scale. Yeah. You're almost, like, there's only bikes, right? But there's yeah. almost no room to put yeah. all the bikes there. It's, it is so off the scale it's amazing um a lot of repetition of um bikes that i don't have much interest in but that's me and some fabulous cafe racer stuff stuff that people have put huge amounts of work into and i just love but coming back to classic cars and coffee the um there was a little fiat 125 rally there it was a bathroom green and um i'm going to pause i'm picking up a huge amount of noise that's jeff who's dropped out yeah, anyway, so I'll pause, I'll continue. The bathroom green uh, Fiat 124 rally, which was just gorgeous, was left-hand drive. So I'm going, somebody in the Fiat club, uh, somebody who loves Fiat, has imported a left-hand drive Fiat 124 rally, and it is a beautiful little car. I really loved it. Presentation was gorgeous. There was a TVR Tamer, which oh. is a V6 sort of good-looking thing. They are very late in the period. They made them with 289 V8s or 260 uh, Windsor V8s in them. I like them a lot. They've got a huge back window, pointy nose. Then there was a sweet little white Escort Twin Cam Mark One. I just, I just drooled over the damn thing. It was gorgeous. And then there was this massive, probably mid 80s, late 90s or mid 90s um, Plymouth two door. It was like a, um, a turd brown. Um, it was just massive. It was 20 foot of torture tin. It was massive. Then there was an F-150 I just loved. It was red, had big boots on it. And I'm going, yeah, this is a whole lot of things I like about classic cars and the insanity of you all. There was an Alvis there, and I really dig Alvis. Um, this is probably a late 30s car, uh, beautiful coachwork, but just Alvises were real gentlemen's carriages, beautifully engineered, nice engines, um, good suspension. Then there was a really cracking little 2002 uh, TII BMW was um, yeah. sort of Kermit green with black mini lights on it. I'm going, yeah, that absolutely worked for me. There was a 924 Porsche there with um, mm -hmm. those factory spider rims on it. Um, just clean. It was sort of a goldy, goldy silver colour. Beautifully presented. Stock standard. Uh, I think it even had the checkered interior with that velour look. Uh, and I was digging it. It was lovely. There was a 190E Mercedes-Benz there in sort of a uh, dark emerald green with um, some, oh, I forgot the name of the mags, Aero 16s on it. Uh, just looked fabulous. There was an E28 BMW and I was, they had to drag me off it. It was just gorgeous. That, that's the second time you've mentioned that, Simon, so yeah. I'm thinking you should get it's one. Tr I think I should get one too. And uh, to finish off, there was a um, Mark II uh, Ducati single cylinder 450 there 
in mm. um, the orange, and I'm going, oh my god, mm -hmm. that was uh, just breathtaking. And they were my highlights. None of the super, I could hear the supercars wailing in the background, but I didn't bother to go and have a look. Mm -hmm. And um, mm. but you know, supercars. I like the, you know, the, the McLaren <coughs> thing. Anyone can buy one of them, Simon. Oh, can they? That funny. That's still that's still that that's still the view because you can, you know, I, my view of this is that if you can buy a supercar and enjoy a supercar, wonderful. That's your experience with the car. If you hmm. want to buy some ancient car that's an honoured oddity and remove the rust out of it and turn it into something beautiful, wonderful. That's your experience with the car. Neither of these hmm. are better or worse than the other. No, they are it's the broad church. With the car. Absolutely, it's broad church. Broad church. And so when I talk to the guys, and you know, um, you know we, we have a luncheon um, two or three times a year for the car collectors. And, and those car collectors, um, you know, they can have as little as 10 cars and as many as 100 cars. And they just quietly turn up to this luncheon. They pay themselves, they pay their way, etc. And they talk non-stop about cars yeah. with enthusiasm like 12 year olds and yeah, absolutely the fact right. of the matter is they're obviously not poor so it's not about money it's about enthusiasm and when yeah, you see these guys passion. turn up with their passion and one of them might collect a whole lot of rolls races another one's big into cadillacs another one has a lot of americana some just don't know what they're collecting they've got so many different cars right but when you sit them all down together no one in around that long long table so to speak is trying to outdo the next one. They're just sharing their experience and their passion for cars. So I think it's really important that when you get a listener that turns around and they've got them a Morris Minor and you know they've finally done it up, whatever it happens to be, and then they complain that some guy in a in a in a you know Lamborghini is is kind of flash. They're just different experiences yeah. that these guys to are having. You know, totally. they really are. Hey, on that subject, right. can I talk a little bit about a collection that's Do. yeah. Oh so, yes. So we um we constantly hear about collections of cars, and sometimes we're told not to speak about them, so we don't. Um, and But this particular one we're going to put on Facebook in the next couple of weeks. About half of the collection is going to be put up for sale, simply because he says, I don't need these cars anymore. I love these other ones that I'm keeping. So some of those cars that are coming up for sale are going to be a 356 Outlaw, which is just an extraordinarily special car. Another one is a 356 convertible in broadly, um, you know, in beautiful condition. Um, the Outlaw, by the way, is in concourse condition. It's one concourse multiple times. Uh, he has a Lotus Esprit Turbo 1986 red with cream interior. Beautiful mm. example um, with 30,000 kilometers on the clock. And wow. it's one of seven that have got fuel injection systems on them. Only seven ever made, the rest of them are carburetta. Uh, you know, he's, he's got an old Mustang that is, uh, that's a, a neat convertible, nothing outstanding, but it's just in lovely condition. So, so we'll put them, you know, on it. Also, he's got a 1969 or 70 911T, which is Ooh, nice. way up there in the six-figure sections. Um, so, mm. so, um, so I've specially said to him, do you want us to mention it? And he said, yes, yes. He said, I'm traveling and I'll be back. So we'll actually put a little link up to the video of, of, um, of walking around. But it's lovely to see because these cars are truly outstanding. I mean, yeah. I, I mean, vaguely you might think maybe the Lotus Esprit Turbo within would be in a bull's reach of affordability. You know, it'll be sub 100 sort of thing. But those others will be, um, you know, they'll be well over that and sometimes multiples that. Fuel injecting that um, 912 twin cam lotus engine absolutely transforms it you know when you've got a hot climate like in australia where you've got uh, twin delortos i think they came those are very unhappy cars the heat build up in the engine bay uh, fuel vaporization they go off uh, bad fuel all sorts of things fuel injection fixes all of that and they turn into really really good cars so it's a, Sorry, Simon. Oh. Why did you sell your Lotus? Was it lots of trouble? I, usually serious? Or? No, it was. It wasn't at all. In fact, <laughs> it was. Uh, that car was more Toyota than it was Lotus. Okay, it was in the exactly. In the, it seems like the perfect Lotus. Okay, so I let me tell. Let me share with you what happened. I fell in love with motorbikes. The Lotus is about as close oh. as you as you're going to get 
to that really responsive driving experience, which I chase. I love the mm. the, immediate, the immediacy that bikes offer. A Honda offer. S600 or a Honda S800. That is the closest well, you can get. They're a motorbike, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> Jeff. Uh, so the, my point is that once I started riding bikes, and I started riding bikes a lot in the countryside, and I kind of went, you know what? This, unless, it's, uh, unless I take to a track, this didn't work for me and I just didn't mm. I wasn't I wasn't working on it I wasn't interested in it I kind of fell out of love with it with it but I probably mm. uh, I will get back into cars again and it's probably going to be a 993 because I can Ooh, I can live with it and it's I think they're so pretty mm. all yeah. the aesthetics work for me and um, they're a sound investment I like the driving experience I've had one um, mm. But that's probably what I'll get next, a 993, mm. as late as possible. Hopefully a manual, whether it's a, a cabriolet or a fixed head, I don't care. Or a um, Targa. And that'll be... Yeah, I actually... Oh, a bit, oh, oh, uh, a bit off like the Targa. Not they, not Targa. They, um, yeah, I don't, I'm not, I don't dig the Targas at all. Anyway, so um, that's probably what I'll get next. Mm. You know, nice. um, Dutton's... So, um, sorry, mate. Dutton's have yeah. a... Um, Get this ready for this. Dutton's have for sale at the moment a 964 GT2 RS. Now, I'm a Ooh. Porsche file and I didn't even know they existed. They made six of them in total, and one wow. of them is here in Australia in right hand drive. GT2 oh. RS? Wow. Yeah, 964 so, GT2 RS. So, uh, speaking of uh, pork content, uh, I just. Uh, in Hamburg, I saw a 964 RS NGT, which was a factory car that had a weld-in cage, uh, and it had like the front splitter from the 3.8 RS, and uh, the one I saw was in mint green. Oh my God, mm. I needed some alone time with that car. That was. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I've always thought that the, the pink was the colour to have a 964 in, but, uh, yeah, the mint green was lines. pretty amazing. Was it, when you say ah. mint green, is that the, like, a metallic colour or, like, viper no, green? No, which it's is... like a, no, it's like a, it's like a pastel mint green. I'll oh, I know, I know. Now. They're, they're, Ruff did it as well, but it's yeah, a, yes. um, yeah, we'll find that picture. But I know it's exactly, it's green. like a... It's a bathroom colour, almost. Yeah, yeah, it's like yeah. the 60s bathroom colour. Uh, and I I finally got a uh, shipping notice that my 996 is on the water. So I'm pretty happy about that. Fantastic. Good, good. Now, which 996 well, is it again, Jeff? Uh, it's the 98 cable throttle sport with the factory 40% locking LSD. So that's got me written all over it. Sure cool. does. Well, gentlemen, uh, unless you've got anything else you'd like to raise, this is your last chance. Um, I'm I'll looking forward to a couple Classic of Cars. things. Please. <laughs> Supercar Sunday is on April the 7th, and we need to know this for two reasons. One is that April the 7th is normally the first Sunday of the month, and therefore it's normally Classic Cars and Coffee, and this month it's not. So Supercar Sunday, and we've got 85, I think, last time I looked, signed up for that, and we... We remove the cars that are dreaming that they're supercars um, and refund them their application. Um, so they're, they're, these cars are, um, will be fabulous cars. Most of them mid-engine. Yep. Briefly run through what Supercar Sunday is for those that don't know. Okay, so Supercar Sunday, this will be the second Supercar Sunday. It was an opportunity for those that have got the supercars, and you heard me passionately talk about how passionate they are, mm. for that, so that they can all get together and go for a drive and, and be able to share their car with sort of like-minded people. So you're going to see everything from the obvious mid-engine um, Ferraris, Lamborghinis, etc., to GT3s and GT4, GT3s, GT4s, um, GT2 RSs, etc., Porsche World, right, um, to um, Aston Martins, high-end Aston Martins um, you'll have in there, etc., and, and it's going to be a, cl a collection of really impressive cars. As I said, there's already 85. We'll probably get over 100 supercars. And we're going to start them in Subiaco. So we're going to start so what them happens? in the market. Please. So they start in market, uh, market Gardens, I think it's called. That's the park Square. at the end of Rockaby Road. Yeah, Market Square. So it's the park at the end of Rockaby Road. So they'll start there. So everyone can go there and have 
breakfast along Rockaby Road and everything else and then go and watch the cars take off. They take off at about 10.30. They'll get there at about 9. Um, there'll be coffee vans around there. So it's really an opportunity to see a whole lot of great supercars together uh, and then go and grab a bite to eat. Off they go. They're actually going to go up the coast road this time and then across um, up towards Gijigan up and then back towards Gijigan up and then back down to Nicola Estate Winery, which is a lovely winery. And mm. uh, they've got beautiful pine trees and grass. Well, that's where all the cars will be. So they'll be right in front of the restaurant and right on the grass where everyone can sort of sit down and sit at the restaurant or wander around, have food and see all these supercars on display. And it's about an hour and a half's drive they get to go on. So a little bit promenading and a bit actually on the country road. So it'll be good for them. Uh, and yeah, so that's Sounds. happening on the 7th of July. July. Oh, July. Sorry, my wow, that's where did brave. that come from? Where did that come from? 7th of April. Um, <laughs> April. So, 7th, yeah, 7th, of 7th, of April. 7th of April. So that means then that Classic Cars and Coffee is on the 14th of April. And the reason yep. this has all happened is because the Cadillac Nationals are on in Perth. And they told us a year ago that they were on and whether they could bring their Cadillacs to Classic Cars and Coffee. And of course we said, yes, 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 yes. We'd love that. And then they said, it has to be on a different date. So we had to juggle the dates around a bit so that the Cadillac Nationals can be on here, um, and they are, and they'll be on display at Classic mm. Cars and Coffee. One has to remember Set with Cadillacs, well. it's, it's not just Frank Sinatra's car, and that'll hopefully be there, um, and the sort of 50s and 60s. It's the 30s, it's the 20s and 30s oh, and 40s yes. um, Cadillacs that'll be there too. So mm. I'm, yeah. I'm really excited about that because I love that. I love the Fleetwood, the 1931 Fleetwood that we see, the V16 yeah. Fleetwood. Love the Amazing. V12. Um, uh, you know, Cadillac Lassar. I just love those cars. So anyway, right, they'll be there on the 14th. Cat Classic Cars and Coffee as normal, but on the 14th, Sunday the 14th this, this month. A yeah. couple of things there, Derek. Does, um, does that mean we'll only be able to fit in half as many cars? <laughs> That's one, one, one thing. Yeah. And, the other, and, the, and the other thing, a third as many, thank you, Jeff. The other thing is that uh, the 7th of March is the York Motorcycle Festival, and uh, some of oh, us right. have loyalties. <laughs> <laughs> ah, so, oh well. Anyway, so uh, we that we take off from Midland and head up the York at uh, Gradison Highway and then turn off the York Road. So um, yeah, and they, they they they'll get in the tens of thousands of motorcycles. Yeah. Not a thousand, not mm. two thousand. It'll yeah. be like up in the ten thousand nice. mark. It'll be. No, I, it's I mega. It's, it's a fun. mental mental yeah. day. Um, yeah, it's pretty good fun. But it's well organised. You try. Guys are good. And, and yes. uh, the driving is fun and you get to see a massive number of like-minded people. You know I've got a motorbike. And, I love it. And when, I, yeah. when I've ridden up there, I've loved the experience. Yeah, I totally like it. And I dig your bike too. When you're ready to sell it, I know a buyer. <laughs> I'll be a but very old man can, by that time. I, I can say that about a lot it. of bikes. <laughs> <laughs> well, gentlemen, uh, thanks for tuning in this week. Uh, we'll be back next month. Um, lots happening in the classic car world. It's the time of the year. There's runs on tons and tons of motorcycle runs on uh, Facebook um, to the likes of thanks Rex for classic um, yeah. cafe races yeah. there's a bunch of car stuff happening too we've got the supercar Sunday um, then the next classic cars and coffee coming up at the University of Western Australia in between there's so many things on it's just a beautiful time of the year to yeah. be in Perth Western Australia and mm. on that note thank you all and uh, we'll see you soon see you guys Sweet. gentlemen yeah. thanks very much um, See you guys. So what will happen is, is last time, last month was an absolute cock up.